I want to begin first by extending prayers for the two police officers shot in Louisville last night. As a country, we are grateful for our law enforcement and the risks they take to keep our community safe. What happened to Breonna Taylor was a tragedy, and we should honor her death by making sure a similar situation doesn't repeat itself in the future. But there is no excuse for the organized violence we are seeing in the streets, and it must stop. Now today marks the one-year anniversary since Speaker Pelosi launched the most partisan, weakest impeachment in the U.S. history. I just watched Sunday. It seems like she's going to try to try again. When people look back on the work of the House of Representatives for the 116th Congress, they will see it was led by a majority more concerned with attacking the president than building up our country. Almost two years since Nancy Pelosi took the gavel and Democrats have done more to dismantle our institutions and delay relief than they have to help the people. And that trend continues. Yesterday, House Democrats, as advised by their leader, Speaker Pelosi, blocked small relief for American small businesses. But this is far from the first time these actions taken place. I'll give you a few examples. April 15th. The Paycheck Protection Program stopped accepting applications after it ran out of funding. Democrats delayed the passage for another two weeks. August 8th, the program's reauthorization expired. House Republicans tried to use emergency weekend session in August. Remember when the Speaker called us back for that emergency with the Postal Service? They had more than $14 billion on hand. And we brought up COVID relief for those who are losing their jobs. They voted it down. August 22nd, when Democrats called for emergency session over their Postal Service conspiracy. Again, blocked it more. September 10th, Senate Republicans tried to pass a targeted relief bill that included $250 billion for PPP. Democrats, once again, blocked it. Despite Democrats unwilling to help, House Republicans aren't going to give up. We made a commitment to America that we will work on rebuilding the greatest economy this country has ever seen, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Last week, House Republicans, led by Ranking Member Steve Shabbat and Jamie Herrera-Butler, introduced a discharge petition to push for a floor vote on PPP extension. You all know what a discharge petition is. It only needs 218 signatures. It comes right tomorrow where people can sign it. I've listened to members on the other side talk about their desire to help and their belief that they have voted once for PPP, question will be, will they put politics before people? Because right now, they've been following the speaker. The speaker told us we would not leave in August unless we had a COVID relief package. But she sent everybody home. She said it again. I don't know if she means it this time. But again, nothing is coming to the floor. In Pelosi's hometown of San Francisco, more than 2,000 small businesses have permanently shut their doors. Perhaps Nancy will want to do more to help them and not just violate local orders so she can get her head out. Because I know back in my district, in Kern County, PPP has helped save 100,000 jobs. Small businesses employ more than half of America's private sector workforce. Helping our small businesses improves the livelihood and strengthens our economy. This is not a Republican nor a Democrat issue. These are people's livelihoods. And for too long, Speaker Pelosi has been playing games with them. Each and every time we have moved to do a COVID relief package, she has either delayed it or stopped it, causing more people to be laid off or small businesses to eventually shut down. Well, now there's an opportunity with the rules of the House that Democrats don't have to follow their speaker. That Democrats could actually show where they stand if they support their small businesses' opportunity. They don't even have to vote for more money. There's more than $130 billion already sitting there. Wouldn't it be nice, before we depart, that we actually focus on what the American public wants us to do? I know a year ago the American public didn't want to see an impeachment, but Speaker Pelosi went that, down that route then, just as she talks about it on Sunday with a threat to cause impeachment simply because a president would follow the Constitution. To me, that's appalling.
That's why there's a difference. There's a difference between the two parties. We made a commitment to America that we would restore our way of life, that we have a plan to defeat this virus, to get a safe and effective vaccine, a plan to make our streets safe and secure again, that we don't defund the police, we add $1.75 billion. It goes to police training, community policing, and 500,000 new body cameras. We also want to uphold the Constitution, protect the freedom of speech, protect religious liberty. But we also have a plan to rebuild this economy. 10 million new jobs. You know what we do? We help with PPP. We help with small businesses. We have a tax proposal to actually help create the jobs. We also end our dependency on China, something the Democrats will not do. Next week, we'll unveil the China Task Force recommendation. We'll bring more manufacturing jobs here. And we have an infrastructure, a five-year plan to build our new streets, our bridges, our highways, and make sure Internet goes to every house. We also have an ability to renew the American dream, make sure every child goes to an excellent school. It's a far contrast for what the Democrats have voted for, a defunding of the police, a dismantling of our institutions, and a destroying of our economy. With that, let me open up for questions. Okay. Um, President McCarthy, the President has declined to commit to a peaceful transfer of power in the event that Biden wins in November. And I was wondering if you had any comments or thoughts on that. There will be a very peaceful transition. A concern I have, though, too, I hope you ask the same question of Hillary Clinton, who simply said out there, never concede the race. Or what about our own Congresswoman? AOC, who said we need to radicalize ourselves. Did that have anything to do with two police officers being shot last night, or two being shot, sheriffs being shot in Compton? Did that have anything to do with the U-Haul truck that was staged putting out military weaponry with shields and others to those who want to protest in a different manner? That's a concern that I have right now, our security and safety of the streets. There will be a smooth transition, and I believe President Trump will have a very good inaugural, and we will reunite this nation instead of radicalize these nations. Yes, sir. Article 6 of the Constitution says, No religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Do you believe that this applies to Supreme Court nominees as well? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Leader, um, what do you plan to do if President Trump refuses to engage in a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election? President Trump will uh, peacefully come to be sworn in again. But It'll be a smooth transition, regardless of the outcome. I'm concerned of what I'm hearing on the other side of the aisle. I'm concerned that the Democrat nominee... The Democrat nominee... Ask me a question, if I may. I'll answer your question. The Democrat nominee, Hillary Clinton, has gone on television. She's not the Democratic to, nominee. The last time the Democrat nominee from the last election has gone on television advising the current Democrat nominee, you don't see the current Democrat nominee because he put another lid on it today. It would be nice to see Joe Biden come out. There's times I worry about his health for the number of days that he puts a lid on it before 10 a.m., talking to the American public and denying us the ability to know what he believes in or, or wants to say when he wants to be the leader of the free world. But you have the former nominee tell him, never concede. You have AOC, the movement leader of the Democratic Party inside Congress today, tell people they need to radicalize. We have on our streets last night officers being shot. The speaker just had a press conference. What did she say about the officers being shot? Did she mention them? You were here. Did she mention... A couple weeks ago, the two officers, the sheriffs that were shot sitting in their own patrol car in their own home state. Did she mention that? And the nominee that we have this year has chosen for the vice president nominee the senator from California, who was the former top cop of California. Did she have to mention anything about those sheriffs being shot? Did she condemn the violence? From what I saw, they did not. That's appalling to me. 
Joe Biden yes. has condemned. But I mean, we're talking about the President of the United States yes. going out and publicly refusing to say whether or not he's going to accept the results. Let me be very clear. Let me be very clear to you. Let me be very clear to you. It will be peaceful. I, I know you want to create a hypothetical. But it's and not that, that's hypothetical good for you, but if the President's. No questions, no qualms, no concerns. It's going to be peaceful. This nation is designed that way. This nation will have it that way. And that's exactly what will take place. Then why won't he say that? Why won't the president say that if that's the case? It's exactly what the president has said before. There's no concern. I, I know there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of small businesses shutting down. There's a lot of people hurting that are unemployment. And Congress is not providing COVID relief. And these are the questions you ask. There's going to be a smooth transition, just as it is every time before. I'm sure you asked the speaker the same question, and you asked her about Hillary Clinton. You asked her about her own member, AOC's, comments as well. Because I imagine that concerned you, but I didn't see that in the press conference either. So let me put it all to rest for all of you. It will be a smooth transition, no concern on the outcome. Yes. Anyone else? I, I mean, neither, yes. neither of those people are the Democratic nominee for president. I know that. I was very clear that she was the former nominee. No, no. I, but, I, I, okay, I just, but that, I just be, mean, like, Biden, Joe Biden was asked about this by Anderson Cooper, if there would be a peaceful The president's been he asked by before, and he said it'd be a smooth transition. I know this will keep you up at night, but don't worry about it. It's going to be very smooth. Oh. You know what's very interesting? If you think Hillary Clinton does not have any more power, she's advising Joe Biden. If you, if you think AOC does not have power in the Democratic Congress... Ask all those who lost in their primaries. Ask all those, ask the Speaker of the House when she had a meeting with AOC as a freshman in the first months. Who tweeted it out? The Speaker, not AOC. So I think those questions are worthy of what the Democratic Party is saying. And I think if there are two officers who were shot last night and you were the Speaker of the House, I think you would acknowledge that. And if those two officers were shot, would you have a member of your own party prior to it, telling the country to radicalize. I think you would condemn that, too. But I think that's the difference between the two of us. I believe in you reuniting this nation, not dividing us. That's why I wouldn't use and try to impeach somebody just because they followed the Constitution. Thank you all. Have a good weekend.